Hello, it's been a long time since I did a revision video, well, a few days, but that's primarily been because I haven't really had any more requests. Oh, God, I shouldn't say that, that makes me look incredibly unpopular. But anyway, right, so here's my own request. God, this has suddenly got a lot more sad. Right, we're going to be doing a bit of biology today, the AQA2 syllabus for biology, and this is unit 5, so the last unit, so probably the hardest. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about the nerve impulse. So, what's a nerve impulse? An impulse is an impulse which travels, which sends information along a neuron. So what we're going to be seeing, how does that message, which I don't know, when I touch a hot object or something, travel along a neuron to my central nervous system, and then that central nervous system coordinates response, uh, coordinates a response, sends it down motor neurons into effectors. How, how does that information get sent along. Now, one thing I would like to say first is that the travel, we know it's all to do, we all know it's due to electrical energy, don't we? A nerve impulse is due to electrical energy, an electrical impulse. But that is not the same, however, as an electrical current. An electrical current is a flow of charge. This isn't a flow of charge, as we're about to find out. It's a reversal of charges along different sections along a neuron. Now, we already should be familiar with different parts of the neuron. So we should know about the axon, that's the long bit basically. The myelin sheath, which insulates the axon, and we'll see how that leads to a quicker impulse later in the video. Um, Schwann cells, which basically make up the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath are membranes of the Schwann cells. Um, the nodes of Ranvier, which we'll also talk about a little bit later as well. All that stuff. So, the movement of an impulse, or we're going to call an action potential now, is all due to movement of ions in the cell surface membrane of the axon. So, think of a nerve cell, uh, think, well, think of a neuron, think of the membrane. <laughs> this is what you're going to get, right? This is the membrane of an axon. So we've got the phospholipid bilayer here. This is inside of the axon, this is outside of the axon. Now before we go into seeing how an action potential is produced, we're going to look at it when it's what we call resting potential. Now, resting potential relies on the activities of the sodium-potassium pump. This is the sodium-potassium pump, and you should know from AS that it actively transports sodium ions and potassium ions against their concentration gradient. So, sodium ions are moved to places from where there's a high concentration, from places where there's a low concentration to areas where there's a high concentration. And potassium, the same thing. So that means, I'm going to write ATP here, because we should know that active transport requires ATP. Now, sodium ions are actively transported out of the axon, whilst potassium ions are actively transported into the axon. So that's all using energy in the form of ATP. Remember this? Sodium-potassium pump relies on energy. Now, one important thing to remember, or to note, is that the active transport of sodium ions outside of the axon is greater than the potassium ions moving in. Right, so, for every three sodium ions, there are two potassium ions. Now, sodium ions and potassium ions are both positively charged ions. But the outward movement of the sodium ions outside of the axon makes the inside of the axon even more negative. So we've got sodium ions actively, trans being actively transported out and sodium ions being actively transported in. Now that um, creates a gradient. So now we've got loads of sodium ions here and loads of potassium ions here. So there's a concentration gradient, there's more, there's a higher concentration of potassium ions here 
than on the outside, and there's a higher concentration of sodium ions here than on the inside. So that means, let's draw them over there for reasons you'll see right, sodium ions and potassium ions tend to naturally diffuse back in and out along a concentration gradient. Now, for the potassium ions, that's not a problem. This is a potassium ion channel, and the potassium ions can just leave like that through facilitated diffusion. The sodium ions, however, have a problem. This is the sodium ion channel, and unfortunately, most of the ones in the membrane are shut. They're blocked off. The sodium ions cannot get in. So, as the potassium ions are diffusing out, the sodium ions are having trouble getting in. So that's making the inside of this axon even more negative. Now, as more potassium ions build up here, there eventually becomes, you know, you know how there'll be a build-up of positive charge here. Uh, we know that light charges repel, so eventually some potassium ions will diffuse back into the axon. So an equilibrium is established. That's the resting potential. So it's mostly due to the activities of the sodium-potassium pump changing the concentration gradient and then an equilibrium eventually being established due to the potassium ion channels being open and the sodium ion channels being closed, or most of them are. So that's when it's at resting potential, right? It seems all seems pretty alive to me, I don't know about you. But anyway, so what happens when an action potential comes along? An action potential is energy. En so energy from a source. I don't know, if I, if I hit that piece of wood or hit a wall, that's creating receptors are picking that up and travelling a message along neurons in my arm, right? So how is that impulse uh, carried along my arm? Well, the energy from the impulse um, opens the sodium ion channels. So sodium ion channels are now allowed to open. So then I should say, by the way, at this point, the inside of the axon is approximately minus 70 millivolts. Okay, so it's negative compared to the outside. So, sodium ion channels open. Hurrah! Right? So, sodium ions begin to diffuse in naturally. No energy is required to diffusion because they're moving along the diffusion gradient. Concentration gradient, even. So, they diffuse along. Sodium ions are positive, so the inside of the axon gets more and more positive. And as more sodium ions diffuse in, that stimulates more sodium ion channels further along the membrane, or this section of the membrane, to open. So, this is called depolarization of the axon. Before resting potential, the axon is said to be polarized, because it's at minus 70 millivolts. But as more positive sodium ions diffusing in, that, that this voltage becomes less and less negative. So it's called repolarization. So, sodium ions diffuse in. Uh, so then a positive charge builds up on this side of the axon. If you want a good reference point, by the way, On page 166, there's your graph, right? We're currently along this bit. The voltage, the potential difference between the inside and the outside of the axon is increasing due to the sodium ions diffusing in. Now, where we are, on, once the action potential has been established, the voltage goes to the sodium... Okay, so... Once the action potential has reached about 40 millivolts, so that's positive 40 millivolts, these channels will close again. So that means no more sodium ions 
can diffuse in. More potassium ion channels, however, will begin to open. So more potassium ions will begin to leave the cell, leave the axon. As potassium ions are positive, that will make the inside of this axon slightly more negative again. Now, as more and more diffuse out, the inside of the axon becomes even more and more negative. So more of these are leaving outside, in, outside of the axon there. In fact, they leave so quickly, there's a temporary overshoot. The inside of the axon gets slightly more negative than it should do. That's called hyperpolarization. It gets to about, I don't know, minus 90 millivolts or so much because so much potassium is leaving and no sodium is entering. But then, due to the actions of the sodium-potassium pump, etc., we return to our resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. But then, this action potential along this section of the axon is enough energy to stimulate another um, action potential on the next section of the axon here, and so on and so on. So, the movement of all of this here is acting as an energy source, a stimulus, for an action potential to be generated in the next step. So that's how an action potential is travelled uh, passed along the axon of a neuron. So it can be likened to a Mexican wave, if you like, because all this, think of this as the crowd, they're standing up, that's acting as a stimulus for the next person um, in the stage or whatever to raise their hands and so on. Now, there are certain things which speed up the impulse. Um, speed up the impulse of uh, an action potential along a neuron. And the myelin sheath plays a very big part in this. The myelin sheath is an electrical insulator. It prevents action potentials from being conducted along the neuron. So think of this, we can see this bit from here, can't we? Here's your neuron, right? Here's your myelin sheath along certain parts of the neuron. An action potential can't be established in this region. So you might think that may stop, um, reduce the speed of an action potential, but actually it increases it. The gaps between these two myelin sheaths the bits which are unmyelinated, are called nodes of Ranvier. So this is your myelin sheath. And these are nodes of Ranvier. Now, these are the points in the neuron where an action potential can be established. So what we see is something called saltatory conduction happening. I remember because saltatory in Spanish means saltar, jump. So that's how you sort of remember this. So, well, if you don't speak Spanish, that piece of information was completely useless to you, but I thought I'd say it anyway. So, so that means that the action potential can actually skip parts of the neuron out, which makes the whole thing a lot quicker. So an action potential here, the next action potential will be here. So this whole section here gets missed out, makes it an awful lot quicker. Um, there are loads of other things which increase the speed of an impulse. Well, there are two more, really. The temperature. Why does temperature affect nerve impulses? Well, it affects the sodium-potassium pump uh, because ATP is required. ATP is involved, is produced in respiration. Enzymes rely on temperature. So that's how uh, the speed of a nerve impulse effect is affected by temperature. Also, the diameter of the axon itself. Because the greater the diameter, the faster the impulse, because there's less chance of sodium ions or potassium ions leaking out. So that's the three ways. Myelin sheath, temperature, and diameter of the axon. I think I can work this off now, and we're on 14 minutes. I was going to do a bit on synapses, but I don't think there's much time now. So, I think that went quite well. 
So, thank you very much. See ya.